Welcome to Two Guys Garage. Yeah, we got a cool episode today. We're going on the road. I'm going on the road. Okay, You're Brian's going on the road. I'm staying here. We're going to a cool location. This is the Armed Services Group coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq. We're going to spend some time with them. Brian's going to teach them a lot of welding and fabrication stuff. Letting the wild man out of the shop. Hold on. Now, if you're gonna start any kind of metal fabrication, home base is your table. It's the first thing you need to do. You know, it involves some cutting and some welding and some laying out, some measuring and all that good stuff. And if you don't make it through the table, metal fab ain't for you. <laughs> it's a good place you know? to start because it forces you to put those beginner skills together you know, in a cohesive manner. And in the end, you got a nice platform for all your future projects. That's right. You know, so what's cool is you get a good start to get rolling on other things but you're never really done. You can always come back and do upgrades to your welding table. That just keeps helping you on your future projects. Sure, you can bend stuff. I mean, you can make little little fixtures like this. You can heat and roll bar. Yeah, you can take, you know, whether you do some simple jigs on your table, tack some of these little angles on here. You can make a frame. Cut them off when you're done, grind it, you're good. And like Brian said, weld a couple of these little guys on there. You can heat up your bar, slide it right in the middle, and now you can start making bends. I mean, so there's a lot of things that you can tack weld on Yep. Maybe it's just a bench vise. Yep. Holds your parts while you weld on them. Yep. So it's endless. This, yeah, and this leads us into Operation Comfort. Went to San Antonio. And these are uh, veterans that have been through, you know, obviously a, a lot of stuff. And uh, when they come back, they want to work on automotive. They want to work on painting and doing some cool stuff with cars. And um, what we did was actually decided, hey, let's go in, help them with a little bit of fabrication, teach them a little bit of welding. And there's a lot of cool stories, a lot of cool guys. So uh, check this out. San Antonio, home of the Alamo, where pioneers Davy Crockett and James Bowie died fighting for the Texas Revolution. But just outside is a ranch, but this isn't your ordinary cattle ranch. It's a special place for our nation's heroes to come together with a common bond. I've always been a car guy, so it's a chance for me to get away from the stress of uh, recuperating from my injuries and just be a car guy. And they owe it all to Janice Resnowski. Well, I was a flight attendant for American Airlines and I uh, was flying the guys in and out of Kuwait and I didn't realize it then, but they changed my life. Janice has flown on her own accord on 14 missions to bring our soldiers to the battlefields of the Middle East. The excited youth are ready to take on their missions, knowing that their lives are going to change forever. Some soldiers aren't fortunate enough to come back to America unscathed. This is where Janice heard her calling. The more you interact with the Army, the Navy, the Marines, they have chosen a pathway, a destiny for themselves of taking care of us. And, you know, I don't even know if they really even know why they do it, but I think they hear the drumbeat. A sound that Janice heard as well, inspiring herself and others to reshape the hospital into a place the soldiers can feel more at home. It's also there to organize ski trips, such as Lake Tahoe and Breckenridge. Surf expeditions to California, where some soldiers actually had to learn a new way to ride and a new way to surf. In 2004, she created Operation Comfort, an organization designed to boost the morale and the quality of lives of wounded soldiers. Operation Comfort's basically given me a place to get away from the hospital, get away from the depressing things that go on there, you know, your therapy and everything that's going on there. It gives you something to get out and go do something different than what you're doing, and it's just absolutely amazing. It's bringing soldiers back together so they can feel normal and, you know, have peace with what happened. I hope that they may find that they have learned a trade or they, you know, have decided that they wanted to go to college to do uh, body work, repair work, whatever it is. I hope that they can find a little bit of it right here. When you come out from a stressful day and you want to come out and hang out with the guys and, and learn to do something, I think that itself is, you know, the comforting. You know, you know you're going to go to a place and it's not going to be what you've just done. You come in here and you're going to do something totally different. Hearing all the great things she's doing for these guys made me want to meet her for myself. 
You must be Janice. Hi, yes. Brian I Fuller. Am. Hey, Brian, it's Thanks nice meeting you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Nice coming out of the heat. Now, before we get going, before we get on the welding class, why don't you kind of tell me about some of the guys you met, some of the stories you've uh, you've had here? Okay. Well, we've got a great group of guys coming out, and uh, one of my favorite stories is there's a fellow with traumatic brain injury. He started coming out, and he has uh, two sons, uh, one eight and one eleven years old. And he started coming out and started working on cars. And he thanked me for having auto motivation and starting this program because he said that he'd been deployed so much that he'd lost contact or lost dialogue with his sons. He didn't even know how to relate to them anymore. But he uh, would call home every night and uh, start talking about coming out to the garage and working on auto motivation and uh, working on engines and learning engines and everything. And I come to find out his son was interested in cars and he didn't know that. Sure. And he said, I have to learn everything so I can go home and teach my son. Oh yeah. Because he said to me the other night, hey dad, when you get home, can we get an old junker and then we can take it apart and it can be a dad's son project. That's cool. Yep. Yeah, I, I like a lot of people, you know, I relate to that because somewhere about that age, you know, my father and I put together a car, did a project together. And so a lot of dads, you know, dads and sons relate. You know, you get to that age, it's a little weird and and so that's a cool story. So, is, yeah. well, I'm anxious to meet some of the guys and uh, get this class. You dudes ready to weld? Oh yeah. All yeah. right, let's see the shop. I want to see it. I know we're not welding in here, are we? This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by Waterloo Industries, storage and organization. Experience life uncluttered. All right. Ready to do some welding? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who all here has welded before? Oh, we got some, all right, that's good. So we can take it up to a kind of a middle level, you know, and go from there. We'll see how much time we have. Now, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna build this table. And this is no CAD drawing. It's just a kind of a rough little layout that I did. You know, a welding table is the very first thing you wanna build. Obviously, if you got wood, you don't wanna burn the place down. You know, you want to be able to ground because you're, you're going to need to ground everything that you work on. If you've got a metal table, you just do it right there. So what we need to do is kind of, we started getting our edges clean. Now one of the things you may not know, know about a table is you want to check the table. This, this side's actually straight, but I know on the other, this is the more concave side, so we'll make this the bottom. Because usually actually you weld the bottom, it's going to want to pull it a little bit anyway. First thing, kind of clean it up. We've already got rid of a little bit of the kind of surface monk, the mill scale. It'll weld a lot better. And now at this point, let's kind of get going and um, we'll take turns kind of getting some people to help me lay these out, start doing some tips and tricks and, you know, start showing you guys some, some different stuff. So, sound good? Sound good. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. All right, so let's just kind of break out, get the welders set up, get the tables going and get it done. Uh, now. The magical question. Did he cut him the right way? Let's check it out. Let's see. All right, now this is gonna end up the base, but the great thing about having this little trash can set up with the table is we already got a table. So what we'll do is kind of square this thing up and be sure you go wild and use a square. Exactly. It's crazy, isn't it? All right, the only length. time you wanna be square. <laughs> so our length looks good. Um, I think at this point we just need to get this tack together and this should turn out really nice. I think it fits really good. The only thing I think we need to do other than that is it looked like we've still got some mill scale and some of these spots cleaned off the ends, but there's still some spots where we need to kind of clean that off. So let's get our grinder. We'll clean that off real quick and then we'll be ready to tack it together. Let's go ahead and get a tack on the inside. All right. Now, a good tip for people is tack on the corners. That way, when you put them in the middle, you don't have to weld through them, you know what I mean? So a good spot is to tack on the sides. Let's go ahead and move over to this other one. Get that one tacked up too. Does that edge look okay there? All right. Cool, that's nice. So we'll put our next tack over here. That'll kind of help, we can lean it and then at that point we'll set it up. Okay. So um, before we do that, so how, how'd you actually end up here anyway at Operation Comfort? Well, uh, back in the end of 06, I got injured uh, in an electrical fire on board the USS Nimitz. 
and then uh, was sent here to Bamsey because of the burn unit and then was there for about six months in the hospital and then got out of the hospital and needed something to go do, you know, something to, to learn how to do some stuff, learn how to weld, all these different things. And uh, Janice started this program out here called Automotivation and started coming out to this and it's, it's been awesome ever since. We've uh, transformed an 84 Bronco and kind of made it with a uh, Army weapons carrier and put it together. And It looks like it'd be fun to run around the ranch here. It looks like an awesome ride. Yeah. All right, well, let's get this, uh, let's get this one tagged. Let me hold it square for you. All right, guys, we got our legs in. Perfect timing. And so now we've got some bracing. These will fit somewhere in this neighborhood. This will be the top, you know, that goes in this area. We can put some clamps and holders or whatever, you know what I mean? Plus it gives a good stable kind of way to, to true it up before we flip it and put it on the table. But before that, we need to kind of measure a distance. So let's get maybe like six inches or so kind of off the leg and let's do some grinding. We'll kind of clean off these areas and now we've got those ground off and clean, which will make sure that it welds a lot better than, than otherwise. So at that point, we probably got to take a break. Stay tuned, we'll be back to finish this thing up. Welcome back. All right, we got our little braces into our welding table here, getting pretty close to flipping it on the bottom side. Now what we're doing is checking square. I'm holding this one up. We still need to lean back a little bit. Now every time you weld and tack, we're kind of working our way around and checking it. We didn't over tack it at the beginning. And the reason is, if you figure out which way you need to lean to, which way you need to pull, pull out your hammer, you can tap it over some, but you can also tack on the side that you know you need to pull it because the weld will shrink a little bit. So we got a couple there. Let's go ahead and get a couple in the back and hopefully that'll kind of bring it right in. Not too bad. And I think actually once we start welding on it, we'll take that into account and we'll weld the sides that we know need to kind of move a little bit and that'll help keep it good and square. All right, let's go ahead and flip it. We'll rotate, come around. There you go. It's not actually too heavy. I made some of these out of like four by fours, man. They will, they will rock your world. Now what we need to do is square this thing up. Uh, I believe I've got it at about two inches from each side. So try to get yourself square on two inches. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, let's tack it. Okay. Go ahead and get it a little hotter than that and more right on the dead corner. There you go. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and start a little bit. Did you see how our heat looks? Yeah, that looks pretty good. You know, getting your heat set right, getting your wire speed, and that's a, a lot of it. Once that's set, you know, you can usually do pretty well. Yeah, those, uh, those look like three kind of tack welds, but I mean, what, what exactly are you doing? Well, what I'm doing is a stitch weld. So I'm actually getting in here, I'm kind of moving forward and working back and letting off the trigger. And what that does is it kind of makes those nice little little dime shape beads. There are guys out there that can work the whole thing and, and not have to. But to me, it's just a good way to get a nice, consistent, easy bead. And once the thing works through, you can actually, when you let off the trigger, there'll be a dot. And if you're, you know, once you kind of get used to it and you get some practice in, you can aim for that dot and that's the center of the weld. So when you aim for that dot, each time that gives you a spot to kind of aim for in order to try to make them consistent. So I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna come in the front, I'm in the front, I'm working back, make a bead. Working back. Working back. There you go. Yeah, hold it a little slower. There you go. Keep going. Main thing, just stay tighter in. So keep the keep the tip a little bit tighter. Um, hold each one a little longer. But other than that, other than that, you're good. There you go. Perfect. All right, so let's try an overhead. Now, when you're overhead, since you're leaned up, it's gonna take a little bit more force 
to push the same speed. Right. So what we do is turn it up from 45 to 55. And then other than that, it's pretty much the same. But then the sparks want to fall on you, of course. <laughs> You've done this before. <laughs> no? You got a natural. Welcome back. All right, now they're finishing the welding on our table over there. So that's almost done. I want to get you guys set on some coupons. We've got some eighth inch pieces here. Now the big deal is you don't want to have it sitting on the table itself, right? Because this is going to be a heat sink. You're not going to get good penetration. It's going to totally change all your settings. So you space it off a little bit. This is kind of the classic way to set up for people in order to practice and learn. So another thing you want to do, really important deal. These are some setup steps that I did in order to get the heat right. You know, that looks good on the top, but if you look at the back, you're not getting full penetration. We're getting a little bit better on the second one. Now on the third one, now that's what you really want because that penetration means that you're getting a full weld all the way through. Not only your heat settings, but your gap settings, you know, are important. So you think you guys would have something like this, you could do chassis and you know, oh, that kind of stuff? We've welded a lot of like the Bronco and the El Camino frames, uh, yeah, but uh, never really realized the importance of uh, behind the welds and you know, the penetration uh, was, you know, it looks like a good weld. So. Really important. Now that we got that going, um, you want to try first? Sure. Okay. You're about 75 degrees. You're about 45 right now. Come on up. There you go. There you go. Get the torch a little tighter to the work. Push it in tighter. There you go. Now you hear it cooking harder whenever you got closer? Yeah. That's why you want to keep it tight. Otherwise it just gets too cool as that thing comes out. Shoot, man, we got a ringer here. Look at that. You don't need any instruction. It's time to go home. So uh, walking around the shop, Mm -hmm. Man, that's got a lot of cool stuff. You must have some help to put this much together. Oh yeah, we've got a uh, we've got just tremendous sponsors in uh, like CarQuest Auto Parts and Hobart Welding Products. Um, without them, we wouldn't have been able to put this clinic on today and uh, just be able to continue on with our projects as we do. Janice has really put together a cool, you know, facility here and a community where people can come in and hopefully it'll inspire a lot of you out there you know, to start something with like your local VFW, you know, with your local people and, uh, you know, get involved. Oh yeah, we've got a just tremendous help through the local VFW around Texas, uh, especially the uh, 4372 branch out of Odessa, Texas. Uh, they've just been a huge contributor to us and to our program. They really believe in what we're doing. That's cool. All right, let's see how the table looks. Fellas, looking good, huh? Did you let them weld anything? No, of course not. <laughs> All right, hopefully you guys learned a few things, you know. Looks like we could radius these edges a little bit, but getting it oiled up. Looks sharp. Dig it? Oh, yeah. You get some ideas for some other tables? Maybe one you can roll under, a little lower, put some shelves under it? This afternoon? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now, I want to be sure before we leave, I thank you guys for your service to your country. It's a huge deal you've done and hopefully we gave you a little bit of knowledge today. I'm expecting some emails. I want to see some photos of stuff that's built around here. Cool? All right. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it. All right, we've got to go to the break room. Stay tuned. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speedtv.com or visit twoguysgarage.com. All right, without fail, you're in the garage, you're about to get a lot of work done. You go to start pulling parts off, you got those rusty, rounded, chewed up bolts. What? Yeah! Old cars? It's crazy. Bolts won't come out? They've been on there way too long and you know you're in for a big fight and you're in for a tough battle. That's when you need a super socket. Yeah, that's when you need a little magic. Or a super wrench. Yeah. Griptite makes these great ratchets 
you know, sockets, wrenches, but they've got a really cool feature in them. It's like a cam lock and it doesn't grab on the corners of the bolt, it grabs on the flats. You know, and the tighter you turn that wrench, like the, the more it's gonna cuff? grip. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a high tech Chinese finger cuff. I mean, check it out. I mean, I pretty much sanded off all the points on this bolt. I mean, it's almost round, but does this wrench care? No. You start to turn that thing, these little cams. Yeah, these, these little teeth just bite right in. These are for real. Yeah. Now, if you look at the socket, cool thing about the socket, let's say you get a spot you can't reach, just hold it in there, you know, you can put your extension on it. Doop, doop, doop. Now you got it started, no big deal. They come in SAE or metric. Yeah. Cover Very all nice. those hard jobs. You know, think about something like this, it's non-magnetic, so you're not gonna get a whole bunch of rust chips stuck onto your socket, you know, and you're trying to get them off. No, it's just a cool little grip feature. Makes your job a lot easier, gets you out of some big jams. Yeah, that's a great tool from Grip Tight. Super, super sockets. sockets, super wrenches. Super sockets. All right, here's a cool way to dress up your chrome, whether it's your bike, you know, your motorcycle, your truck, your car. You know, take that chrome and give it that custom look without spending that big high dollar. Yeah, this Duplicolor Shadow is awesome. Just try to find a chromer that will actually do black chrome for you. He's not happy. Yeah, it's bring not your an, wallet, your friend's wallet, your wife's purse. It's not yeah. an easy process to do. It's, it's very hard just to find somebody that will do it for you. Yeah. And Duplicolor's come up with a cool way where you can do it at home on some chrome stuff you have on your truck or car. It's a two-can process, so you prep, you know, obviously get it good and clean so it's gonna stick. Put down your black, then you come back with a clear, and now you got a cool black chrome look on your car yeah. that you did yourself in your garage. I mean, cool way to dress up some old chrome wheels. You know, you got your translucent color and your, your clear on top is going to keep it nice and protected. You know, you're not going to get, you know, corrosion from your brake dusting, you know, just from road debris. It's a great way to dress up your car, truck, or motorcycle yeah. from Dupa Color. That's good stuff. Well, that's about the end of our show. I want to make sure we thank Operation Comfort and uh, obviously all our armed service men and women that are out there saving our country. And uh, freedom is not free, as you know. Big props to all you guys out there in the armed services. We appreciate really it. appreciate it. Thanks for keeping us safe. See you guys next time.